Today we have the, the last day of the Chair of Unity Octave, in which we, of course, are praying for the conversion of all sorts of classes of people, from pagans and heathens to the, Jew, the conversion of the Jews and the Mohammedans and, and the Anglicans and so many others. We're praying for their conversion. And how interesting that the octave ends on the Feast of a Conversion, the conversion of the greatest missionary of all time, St. Paul. And we had the long epistle this evening that described his whole conversion and how it worked. It was very unique, unlike most conversions. This one happened all of a sudden. He was on his way, as we just read. He was on his way to persecute the Christians. He had gotten his letter from the higher up in the Jewish religion and received his permission to go and and kill any man or woman who professed Christianity that he met along the way. And he was out with his other men on horseback, about to carry out this awful thing that he was about to do. And all of a sudden, you know this story, a great light shone from heaven, and it knocked Paul off of his horse. And when he hit, he was blinded, but he heard our Lord speak. And St. Paul asked, Priestess Domini, who art, who art thou, my Lord? And then our Lord spoke back to him and revealed who he was. I am Jesus, whom you persecute. And immediately St. Paul, recognizing what he had done, he had received already an interior conversion. And it's known because the very next thing he says is, Quid me vis facere in Latin means, what wilt thou have me to do? What is your will for me? That's what we're all seeking for in our daily life, right? And that's how we sanctify ourselves, by doing the will of God. And on that, that night, he was converted. What wilt thou have me to do, Lord? And he told him, you will go into this town at this time, and you will meet in this place, a man named Ananias. And he did, he went there. He had to be led there because he was blind. For th and for three days he sat there in the dark and without any food. Meanwhile, our Lord appears to Ananias and tells him, well, I've just converted this man, Saul, and, but he's going to be my vessel of election. Ananias, he does what we all do every day of our life. He questions our Lord. He says, as if our Lord didn't know anything about Paul, the man that he just converted, he says, but Lord, do you know this man? This is a man I've heard so much evil about. He goes here and he goes there persecuting Christians. As if, he, as if our Lord didn't know that, he said. And our Lord said, don't worry about it. You do my will and you go to meet him. And he is going to be a vessel of election that will carry my name to the Gentiles. And I will show him how much he has to suffer in doing that. And so he went and St. Paul was baptized. And from one of the, one of the greatest persecutors of Christ and of his church, he became the greatest missionary of all times. Because as it says elsewhere in the liturgy today, Thy grace in me hath not been in vain. We have to accept the graces that God gives us for conversion. But most conversions aren't worked like that, are they? We read about so many sudden conversions in the Gospels or the Acts of the Apostles as today's conversion, but we've seen how St. Mary Magdalene was converted how the, the St. Dismas, the good thief, was converted all of a sudden. And they converted themselves, well, God converted them so well and so completely that they made up for everything in the instant of their conversion. So St. Dismas was able to go the very day to paradise. This day, our Lord told him, thou shalt be with me in paradise. That is how complete their conversion was at that instant, how great their love of God was. 
But most conversions take place over time. You know, I was in the sacristy just a few minutes ago and told Timothy, today I'm praying for your conversion. And he just sort of laughed at me, thinking I didn't know what I was talking about. But it's true. Every day we have to be praying for our conversion. We're all Catholics, but we need to be completely converted to our blessed Lord. There was that, that man in Detroit, Father Solanus. I think he was in the 40s and 50s, before the changes. He was the porter of some monastery there. But he was so holy that sometimes he would work up to a 100 miracles a day. And the greatest of them was when he was given an ice cream cone. And then he got distracted. He put it in his drawer because someone else came in. Well, hours later, he came back to it. It hadn't even melted. So he just picked it up out of the drawer and started eating it. Anyone in my books that can work a miracle like that is a saint. But in any case, he would always say, he was so humble, he would always say to, to people that came to see him, pray for my conversion. My goodness, he was already working miracles, a hundred per day. He was one of the most humble men living. Every day he prayed or asked people to pray for my conversion. That's what we need to be doing every day and asking Our Lady to do that as well because that's what we do every day. Every time we go to bed, we're looking back over our day, we see all of our faults and our sins and our imperfections. The next day is a new day. It's time for our conversion. It's time to start it all over and try and ask Our Lady to take you by the hand, to show you the will of God as our Lord did to St. Paul, and to be there every step of the way, inspiring you, giving you courage to do God's will, even if it causes you great suffering, such as St. Paul had to endure in his missionary labors, just to spread the name of Christ. So let's all of us pray, not only for souls to convert to Catholicism, Let's pray for one another's conversion, too. We've got the faith. We don't always have the charity. That is the love of God that we need. So let's pray for one another for that very intention tonight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.